If you play literally any video games, this probably doesn't come as a shock to you, but there's a bit of competition between players of different console types. Obviously, when we look at psychology, people tend to group around a common value or ideal and really go on the defensive for their ideal and go on the offensive towards things that break their values and ideals. This same tribalistic mentality surprisingly seems to apply to consoles too. For years, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and PC players have pretty much gone at each other's throats in regards to which console is the best and which console is deserving of praise. Many have called this the console wars, and it has become a pretty intensive debate in the gaming community for years. Still, in 2023, are the console wars even relevant anymore? Does it actually matter which system you buy? Well, obviously it doesn't matter. The system you choose to play on is the system of your choice, and it really shouldn't matter if some people like that system or not. But some people still find themselves immersed in this supposed conflict, fighting it out online to try and push the narrative that their console is better than the rest. But why do people even start console wars in the first place? What's the point? Is it all just grouping around a common object? Is it something else? Well, let's just dive right on into this topic. Surprisingly enough, the console wars of today between prominently Xbox and PlayStation was not the only console war that was existent throughout gaming history. In reality, the first console war seems to stem from the late 80s and early 1990s, when Sega and Nintendo were fighting it out for title of the best. The thing is, Sega would eventually be pushed out of the competition and cease producing home console systems by 2001, paving the way for Nintendo to be declared a seemingly clear winner. The second round grew out of competition between Xbox and PlayStation. For a while, Xbox seemed to be beating Sony's PlayStation. The Xbox 360 was hailed as a top-tier console for years, but then the PlayStation 4 entered the arena and obliterated the Xbox One. And now with the PlayStation 5, over 30 million copies copies have been sold to date, despite the semiconductor shortage and the supply chain issues plaguing PlayStation, which only recently were rectified. The console war seems to have grown in a different direction for the corporate execs, however, with Microsoft offering to buy Activision for nearly $70 billion. The figure alone is insane and is something well outside of Sony's reach. Additionally, Sony believes that if Microsoft buys Activision and gains Call of Duty, then it could damage competition between the two consoles in favor of Xbox. Microsoft believes that Sony already has enough exclusive titles for the PlayStation that it really shouldn't matter. Microsoft also stated that Call of Duty would keep releasing on the PlayStation anyways, so technically Sony shouldn't care. But obviously Sony's gonna care. Competition between the two companies is high, and both are attacking at each other to gain dominance in the market. So where do fans fall in this massive mix? Well, just go on the internet and you will see diehard fans from all ends of the spectrum competing in a virtual online ring to see which console is better. YouTube channels, Twitter pages, Instagram accounts, etc. all seem to be trying to showcase why their choice of console is the clear choice. It seems like the console wars isn't going away, so it's technically relevant as a concept in 2023. Aside from Xbox and PlayStation, the PC is also often looped into the mix of the console wars. The PC is not just a gaming system, which makes this a bit of a tricky subject. PCs were built for lots of multi-purpose work, and PCs aren't necessarily gaming systems. Outfitting a PC with the right specifications will make it a gaming PC, and so technically, it makes it a gaming system at that point. And technically speaking, a console is just a PC that was reconfigured to be basically for games. At the end of the day, open up an Xbox and PlayStation and you'll find pretty much the same components in a PC that you do inside of a console. So PC players have tried to assert for years that they are significantly much better than every single console on the market, even earning the title, quote, PC Master Race. Well, is that true? From a hardware standpoint? Yes, PCs can certainly be better, no other system can withstand graphics the way some PCs can, no other system can perform at the complexity that some PCs can, they are going to get expensive the more you put into them, but a PC is still the most powerful and effective system for games. And then Nintendo exists inside of this mix of consoles as well. Nintendo has differentiated itself quite a bit compared to the others, because the handheld Nintendo Switch is one of the best handheld systems on the market. Plus, the Switch gives users a chance to play Nintendo-exclusive titles. But then, is Nintendo still the king of handheld gaming systems when the Steam Deck exists and has basically put a PC into your hands? 
System-wise, the Steam Deck is better than the Nintendo Switch, right? I mean, it's literally a PC in your hands. And it operates very effectively. Sure, you don't get Nintendo-exclusive titles, but if you don't care about those, now you can get access to famous PC exclusives instead. Isn't that usually more desirable? In capitalism, the concept of competition is what spurs companies to continue to innovate in order to outrank their competitors. When Xbox and PlayStation buy out gaming studios to make them exclusives, it's to create more competition and give players a chance to pick a system that fits their wants and needs. When Nintendo and Steam create handhelds, they are providing alternatives to the others to try and gain sales based off of the idea of taking gaming anywhere. I don't think PCs are the most relevant to this particular discussion point because competition in PCs is mainly between hardware component companies, so it's a bit complicated to involve here. Either way, my main point is that the console wars are only relevant because the companies want them to be relevant. At the end of the day, if other people play on the system you like, it won't change your life. It's a vanity thing because really nobody will actually care what someone else does. If you like PlayStation, then that's what you'll buy. People can criticize your decision, but you still bought what you wanted. Companies truly are the ones that are benefiting from the console wars. So long as they spur people to fight over something silly like this, they have more fuel to innovate, differentiate, and create systems to fight the other companies with. So console wars are still relevant in 2023 for sure, because they're relevant to the companies making our consoles. This pretty trivial conflict matters, because it leads to sales and it leads to consumer loyalty. My message is pretty much this. Don't pay too much attention to the chatter about what console is best and why you need to spend your money on a console over another if the discussion diverges into a console war-esque conversation. And by this, I mean that attacking someone's character is not terribly relevant to if the Xbox or PlayStation is good or not. Try to find impartial opinions and genuine reviews on the system of your choice and look into it by yourself. At the end of the day, you're the consumer and you're going to be using the product. If you don't like it, nobody else is affected but you. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to all so you never miss out on a single upload. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. Thanks for tuning into DZSH Gaming. If you want more gaming news, entertainment, and more, check out our website. The link is, as always, in the description below.